Always great chatting with my next guest who's going to be back in action. UFC Fight Night, February 25th. It's Jasmine Jezevidius. Back here on the program. Jasmine, how are you? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing awesome. Uh, good to see you get a fight booked. I know you had to switch up an opponent. Uh, looked like you had a full camp, though. When did you find out about the fight? Um, so initially I found out uh, like full a while ago. It was a full uh, full fight camp. And then um, just recently, well, I guess it would have been like maybe a week or two now that the switch up was made. Um, I heard Courtney Casey was out. I don't know what happened. I just got a message from Mick saying she's out and, um, you know, this girl's stepping in. So whatever. At least you're still fighting, which is great, right? I know sometimes it can be tough to, to get an opponent. You are fighting Gabriella Fernandez. I believe that's how you say it. Um, has there been much of an adjustment in camp to the new opponent? Um, a little bit, you know, she's a Southpaw. So obviously, you know, we're switching things up a little bit for Southpaw, but you know, overall, it's not really what they're, what, who, who I'm going against. It's more what I'm doing and what, what, what's working for me. And so, uh, you know, doing what you can control and that's me. So. Yeah. And that's a good rule in general, especially I'm sure you knew this on the regional scene, you'd have opponents go out. So you got to kind of prepare and kind of sharpen your skills and not worry so much about the opponent. Right. So exactly yeah that's great uh we haven't seen you in a while of course your last fight was in, in june of last year uh we're talking about a fight here in february uh was this by design or, or were you trying to get in a, a fight in between there trying to fight sooner no i was trying to fight sooner i i've been fight, trying to fight since like november i think it was um i i don't know exactly if it was like on my management side or ufc side or my coach i don't know exactly mm -hmm. what was uh what was going on but you know finally i got this locked down oh, oh you know what it was mm -hmm. there was rumor that it there was ufc coming to canada that's so right so yeah. it was like okay so i'll wait for the canada card but then that wasn't happening we're like okay like we gotta fight it's been so long yeah and that probably explains why, too, they made that Johan Le Ness and Mike Mallott fight, which is like kind of weird. Well, kind of sucks for Canadians because like we got to see someone lose. Right. And there aren't that many Canadians on the roster. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting. You, you mm. don't usually see them putting two uh, against the, the, the same, but yeah. uh, who knows? Yeah, well, I think, I like I said, if it was on a Canadian card, I would understand you get sort of double your money there, right? But uh, but the fact that they're not fighting uh, on a Canadian card, it's kind of a bummer, but that's here nor there. Um, this is uh, this is new for you and me, where we're going to be talking about a fight where you're coming off a loss. Um, so what did you learn the most from that fight against Natalia Silva? Tough opponent, but uh, you always learn more from a loss than a win. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, uh, you learn more, and there's nothing more that gets uh, that fire going under your ass than a loss. And mm. uh I feel like I've really grown since that fight. I feel like I've learned a lot. You know, I, I really think that I, I went into that fight with the wrong game plan and like the wrong mindset, the, the wrong kind of, I feel like I was trying to eat soup with a fork. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I just had the wrong tools for that fight. I, um, and I didn't make the adjustments in the fight. I didn't, I didn't really realize that it wasn't working until it was too late. And um, so now, you know, moving forward, I've really worked on like being aware of like what's going on in the fight and actually fighting intelligently as opposed to just fighting like, I, you know, I just want to mm -hmm. get in there and fight. That's part of it. But I still have to use my brain in there. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I'm sure the extra time off was good to just work on some skills and, and other stuff. So, I mean, that's kind of the silver lining here. You've been off for a while, but you can work on other things, right? exactly that's yeah. the glory of mma is there's always something to work on yeah and you can always learn and i think people forget too that like you started mma a lot later than other people i still love that story about uh you know going to the ufc ottawa card now here you were here are in the ufc as a mainstay which is kind of cool so that's great um i mentioned your new opponent off the top eight and one record how are you looking at this fight from a style perspective um so southpaw kicker you know sort of getting getting prepared for that she throws a lot of head kicks a lot of a lot of body kicks, a lot of leg kicks too. You know, she's uh, su super active. I think it's going to be a tough fight. She looks strong. She looks fit. Um, but that being said, it's still a fight. And uh, I think that it's going to, I think it's going to be really good. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. What about camp? I know you spent some time at ATT. Uh, what, what does camp look like leading, leading into this fight? Yeah, so I was very fortunate this camp. I did kind of half it, the first half at ATT and then uh, second half coming home with my coaches. And it was awesome because I, I got to go to ATT and 
work with these girls and they're, they're such high level girls in all different disciplines. So I feel like I got looks uh, from the girls at like the peak of their thing. They're all world champions, Olympians, like you name it, that's in that room. And um, so to, to be able to go in there and do hard round, like, you know, you're exhausted. You look around trying to get an easier round, not a chance. And hard rounds. And um, so it was very, very awesome for me to see what works and what doesn't work on girls at the highest level. And then uh, kind of bring it back home and fine tune with my coaches. This is what was working. This is what, what's not working. And like, let's go from there. That's awesome. Who did you get a chance to work with? I know ATT is a big gym. We'd probably be here all day if we named everyone that you train with. But who are some names that, that come to mind when I say that? Well, first, the, the last couple of days that I was there, Joanna came. And oh, that's like, awesome. When I saw her, I, she is an inspiration for to me. I I... I don't know how she did it, like to be the champ for that long and to have like the media obligations, like sponsorship stuff, like everything outside of fighting and then to perform the way that she that she always did. It, it's just uh, mind blowing to me. And uh, so right when I saw her, I was like, oh, my goodness. You know what I mean? Like I, I was uh, like had this that, that emoticon or whatever with the star eyes. That's how yeah. I felt. <laughs> but That's great. Uh, so I, I got to do a little bit of work with her, not too much because it was at, at the tail end, but I got to work with her. Um, I got to work with Mira, M Mira, I forget exactly how to say her name, but uh, <laughs> I got to work with her and Gloria, her wife. They they were awesome. They are always so, so good to me. Um, you know, when I was there, uh, Marina, she was there a little bit. Carolina was there. I got there. I mean, I could keep going. Michelle Montague that just fought. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was it was awesome. Those girls, they're they're hard workers and they're always down to scrap. How long were you there for? Like, what was the time period? I was there for just under four weeks. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, so pretty long camp then. That's good. Yeah. And then but additionally is when I thought that I was going to be fighting, I went down for I think it was four weeks and then I found out I wasn't fighting. So I uh, came back. So I kind of I got to do a little bit like two stints there, which which was very, very nice for me. I got a lot more attention from the coaches than I thought because I'm like an outsider coming into the gym. Mm -hmm. But they're they're super welcoming. They were super awesome to me. I, like I can't say enough great things about about ATT, the coaches, the program, everything they've got going on. I, I know why they build champions. That's great. And who's going to be making the trip with you uh, for this time around? Obviously, Chris will be in your corner. Who else is going to be making the trip with you? So going back to the basics, back to the OG, Chris, uh, Matt Antonio, and Matthew Jelly. Love it. Love it. Love Matt Jelly. Hope he's doing well. So is Matt, is Matt living? Because he travels a lot, right? So is he fine? Is he staying in Ontario right now? Where is Matt right now? We locked him down. I don't know okay. how long we've locked him down for, yeah. but uh, we locked him down for a bit. I, he has a place here that... And, um, I think, I think that we're going to be able to keep him for a while. I know he gets skittish and wants to travel, but mm -hmm. I think we'll be able to keep him for a bit. I'm, I'm hoping at least. Yeah. Fingers crossed. One of the best uh, padmen there. I think people forget he actually did pads for Weili Zhang when she won the title, which was uh, very cool. So that's awesome. Uh, how do you see this fight playing out on February 25th? How do you see it going down? Of course I see my, myself with my hand raised at the end of the fight and, uh, I, you know, I don't know what, what the plan, like, you know, I know what our plan is, but I'm not, I'm not super set on a game plan for this fight. I, you know, I'm going to let, let the chips fall where they may, may, if it's striking, if it's grappling, like I, I have really been working on both so much. And so I'm not going to get too tunnel vision because I want to see my openings and I, I want to see what's available. So I'm hoping for a finish, but I'm not going to get crazy and, uh, I'm going to, uh, I, I'm just going to get that win. I imagine you want to keep active this year. Is that kind of the plan? Just with the fact that, like you said, you had some time off from last year. So if all goes well, you're healthy, maybe get another one in maybe in the summer or something. Is that kind of what you're looking at? Yeah. You know, God forbid that I take no damage this fight and I can get back home and jump right into camp right away. I feel like it was way too much time 
uh, layoff. But since my last fight, I want to be super active this year. You know, just like I said, I'm, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. And uh, I really want to get a bunch of fights in this year and, and work my way up the rankings. That's awesome. Uh, you've been pretty active on Twitter. I've, I've been noticing over the last little bit. Is that is that by design? And it seems like you're really enjoying it. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I had such a kind of, uh, I guess, jaded view on uh, on social media before. And I just didn't really have an understanding of it. I, I struggled with it. It was very hard. But then, you know, I, I kind of researched it a little bit more. And I'm like, you know, I'll just put my personality out there. And um, I've had some help with it from this guy, Goisman. He's been helping me out with social media. And um, just like giving me little tips and tricks, and I feel like it's really it's really helping me. And now I'm I'm actually enjoying it, and I think people get to know me a little bit better now. Yeah, no, I agree. I I love all the posts. It's it's great, and uh, you know, just because I think that's one of the easy ways to interact with the community is a lot of people are on Twitter, and I think that's like a great uh, sort of sort of base uh, to do that there, which is uh, which is really cool. Uh, before we get out of here, we had a you know sort of a, a big bit of news last week. Uh, Laura Sanko doing commentary uh, for the UFC card. Just your reaction to that as a fellow female? Look, it was pretty cool to see her get this opportunity, which was well deserved in my opinion. Yeah, no, I love it. I I've always loved Laura Sanko. I think that she's she's amazing. I think that she asks great questions. She's always like on her feet. She's quick. I think that she's awesome. I uh, I got to see her very first time, like watching the fights yesterday and hearing what she's saying. I think she's gonna be a great asset to the team. I I love it. Yeah. It's awesome to see. And it's awesome to see you back in action, Jazz. We're so happy. UFC Fight Night, uh, February 25th. Is there anyone you'd like to thank before we get out of here? Any sponsors, any social media you want to plug? I'll give you the last word. Obviously, always thank my coaches and my training partners, Niagara Top Team, I think it's the best team in the world. And uh, thank you so much for having me.